2024 Darton Sequel 33. Let's check it out. Hello and welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm FJJ here with PodiumArcher.com looking at the new Darton Sequel 33. This bow is, what's the date here? It's uh, November 28th and this is going to launch tomorrow. So I'll be burning the midnight oil to edit this out so I can launch it when I'm supposed to. This bow is $1149.99. Um, how long till production is actually ready for these when these shipping? Uh, it should start shipping in about two weeks. Okay, so you should be able to start receiving these in two to three weeks from launch date. This bow is uh, rated at 334 feet a second, is a physical weight of 4.65, 33 and a 16th axle to axle and six and a quarter brace height. New cam system might look a lot like, oh, I, I, my first inclination was this is a Bowtech and PSC had a baby, which Darton does license some of what they make to them. So it's not, a, it's not like a knockoff. This is actually their tech. And I, I really like what they've done. They're gonna have a new shim system. Instead of like a whole bunch of spacers in there, they're pre-built sizes and there should be a variety of them so you can move the cam back and forth, which is a nice feature to have. And they're gonna be color coded, which is something I've been wanting to see for a while so you know what goes together. Let's measure some of this stuff and see what we get. All right, our axle to axle is supposed to be, I forgot, grab that little sucker, 33 and a 16th. And I'm gonna to go to your side of the axle. And it's probably more like 33 and eighth, but really close. Our brace height's supposed to be six and a quarter. And I'd say it's six and a quarter to the front of the string. I like when they do that because that's a little more honest. So if anything, it's got a higher brace height than it says there compared to how most other people measure these things. Our overall riser length is 32, which is a really long riser for a 33 inch bow. That's pretty sweet. Let's see what kind of reflex we got here. Looks like an inch and a half reflex. That's pretty reasonable for this overall dimension and spec with a six and a quarter inch brace. Let's see what our physical weight is. Okay. Now they measure that weight without this little fella on there. So we took that off so we can get a fair measurement. There we go. Just need to be reset. So plumbing in at like 4.7 with the arrow rest on there. So that's actually a pretty good number. That's uh, anything a titch light. So that's awesome. Um, we'll go ahead and put that back on. Whoa. Check our physical draw weight. And are we already set at the, this bow goes to, it's a 25 and a half to 31. And it looks like we may need to change the draw length here to get this set right. And it's a 50 pound peak, 60 pound peak, and 70 pound peak. So before I bother checking the weight, I should probably reset the draw length. Go ahead. All right, so we clarified that the bow is set at 30 inches. Now I just gotta check our draw weight here. Zero, okay. Sixty nine point eight. That's within two tenths. So we'll leave it there. Let's see what our drawing length measures out at now that we're set at thirty. Okay, this has the eighty five percent peg on it. We don't have an eighty percent to measure, so this is measuring out at thirty and a quarter. And the peg would be bigger, so it would stop sooner. So it would probably be more like thirty and an eighth. So barely long. But what we have to measure is measuring out at a solid thirty and a quarter to the dead center of the bolt hole, which lines up with that handle pretty good. So it's just a tiny bit long. So just keep that in mind when you're checking your lengths of what you're gonna try to fit into. All right, we're gonna take three shots for an initial assessment here and then we'll check out the vibrations. So draw cycle's pretty consistent all the way through. There's no big hump and no big dump. Um, it's a little more front loaded but it's smooth into the back end. A tiny little bit of vibration, but it's it dissipates relatively quickly and I don't feel uh, much for forward hop, which I would say is an improvement over what I tried of theirs last year. This bow does feel a little better. I'm trying to feel that pull in in the end. Yeah, 
yeah, there's a, there is some initial, and that gauge will tell us better, but um, it dissipates really, really well. Um, some people may not may not like it, but I actually really like their uh, their machine grip and the riser. It's a uh, it's a nice clean feel, and I can always tell when my hand is on the grip, and no part of my hand is obstructed by it, so that's pretty nice. All right, let's set up the vibrations. Okay, we're gonna do our three shots for vibration. Set the record. Okay. Twelve sixty nine, thirteen forty. That's an average of 13. Eleven two, so thirteen, thirteen, eleven. So that's should be about a twelve point two. All right, we'll see what kind of speeds we get. All right, this is 70 pounds, 30 inches, 350 grain arrows. Three through the chronograph. We're looking for 334 feet per second. Three twenty-six. Three twenty six. So that's an average. It was at three twenty five, twenty six, twenty four. I think it was two twenty six or two twenty six. So we'll give it. Uh, we'll give it three twenty six. All right. Now we'll shoot uh, four fifties and five fifties and see what we get there. All right, now we're gonna shoot some 450s and 550s. Two eighty five, so we'll give you a two eighty seven average. All right, so we got five fifties here. Two sixty one, two fifty nine. Two sixty one. All right, so that's a two sixty one. Oh God, I'm sore. All right, so let's take a look here. 
and we're going to fill out speed. So you're within eight, getting a 326 for a six and a quarter bow, 33 and an eighth inch brace height. It's pretty reasonable speed. It's not the fastest one, but it's also not the slowest one. And it does feel really good. So I'll definitely, I'll give you at least a four. I'm going to think about that a little bit. So tunability, we're still dealing with a shim system, but that does have shims and yokes. So it's a little bit ahead of your basic shim system. It's not going to, you still got to take the axle out. It's not like super, super simple. So I'll give you a three on tunability. Uh, features, it does have an integrated rest, but that's kind of it. There isn't any other features to be said there. Uh, so I'll give you, I gotta give you a two there. I'd like to see you guys work on that a little bit more. That's from a previous thing. Um, balance, the bow actually balances really well. It doesn't feel top heavy. It doesn't feel uh, weighted in the bottom. Uh, I'll give you a four on that. The back wall is really solid. I didn't get to feel it with 80% because we didn't have that, but it does cycle and hit real clean and real good. I'll give you a four there. Uh, I do really like the grip. Um, I wish there was a little more edge to it because it's almost too contoured. I can still feel it. But personally, I'd like to feel a little bit more of an edge, so I'm going to go ahead and give you a four there. Draw cycles, it's a little heavy in the front, but not bad. I think for the speed that you're getting, it's a pretty clean draw cycle. Wouldn't call it perfect, but it's still good. 12.2 uh, for a 4.6 pound 33 inch bow is a little higher, so I can't like give you a five on it. I th I'll give you a four there. Um, let's see, da, 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 what else am I missing here? Um, I did these off camera, I filled them in, so our weight was pretty close, but the bow's still a little heavy for that size. That, that bow could be made lighter, so I can't give you a five on it, but I'll give you a four. Um, yeah, the ATA was a good overall physical ATA and super close. It wasn't exact, but it was super close, so that's a four. And your brace height was spot on, even if not anything more forgiving, and it's more than six inches, so I'll give you a five on that. Uh, I did mark down a little bit on the draw because it was a little long. I'll give you a four there, and reflex geometry of an inch and a half. Uh, isn't isn't bad at all. Like it should be a still a relatively forgiving bow, but unless if that number is below an inch, I'd give you a five on it. But still pretty good. Uh, and eleven forty nine. So this is a tricky question. Um, there's a lot of bows out there in this. To I'm going to say this price point to the fourteen hundred dollar price point. Um, so they're at the bottom of that price point in my mind. So I think it's actually a more than fair price for the product. Uh, I know it's, it's not the, the biggest name in the industry, but they have been around a really long time. They hold a lot of patents and have made products and have been there. So when you're like getting a lifetime warranty from something, it's kind of nice to know the company has been around a long time, still in existence, that kind of deal. Um, so price-wise, I'll go ahead and give you a four on that. So let's see what we come up with here. Four, eight, 10. 13, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. If you get 25 high score. And the MFO, 16, 20, maybe 29. So those are really pretty fair numbers for that bow. I'm actually relatively impressed with it. Um, there's so many bows at that price point though, so it's gonna be a little trickier to see where it fits in in most shops. Uh, but it's definitely a bow you should really compare and give a fair analysis to. I mean, they did, I mean, let's be realistic here. They did redo everything on this bow. It's a new riser, it's a new roller system, new cam. Um, this is new for the whole year, pivoting adjustable module, yoke adjustability, shim adjustability, I mean, roller guard, wider limb stance. Like they really went through and redesigned the whole bow. So kudos and hats off to them for doing that. I appreciate innovation and trying to make a better product and not limiting what your options are, i.e. we're just gonna change one little part of this this year and then one little part next year. So hats off to Darton for making an effort there. I'm not sure where, where it'll fit, if it will or not, but it is, a, it is an intriguing bow and we are allowed to sell these on our website. So we will probably carry some, bring some in and list them up for you on there if you're interested in purchasing one. If you don't see the one that you're looking for on there, message us and let us know. Uh, you can email through the website saying, hey, I was looking for this config. I don't see it on the website. Are you getting one in? We'll go from there. Um, all in all, it's definitely one to check out, and they also have a couple more coming out that are more price point uh, restricted that I'm super excited to test, but we don't have a 70-pound bow yet, so we can't do it yet, but as soon as we can, we'll get it out to you and let you know what we think. Comment down below on what you think of this video and other videos that we make and how much of a moron or genius or idiot or whatever that I am. I don't care. Put it in there and let the community share. I rarely ever delete a comment, even the ones that aren't very nice. I still, in general, just leave them out there and let people have their own opinion because I believe everybody has a right to that. Um, you don't have to like me, and that's fine. I don't care.
It really doesn't make, I'm not gonna sleep any differently one way or another. I'm simply trying to give you an environment to test these numbers in the same place. So you have a fair comparison, so you can hopefully make a better decision ahead of time, do a little homework before you show up at the shop to try them. Thanks for watching.